four of Integral, we're the, the guys who make Fusion Reactor as well as Nerd Vision. And uh, yeah, let's kick off. So quick agenda, um, our mission. So I just want to put a slide up for that so that you're aware of what, what it is that we're trying to do. Then we're going to be taking a look at how applications have changed and what those changes mean, what's the impact uh, on monitoring uh, applications. And then I'm going to go through how Fusion Reactors responded to those changes. Um, then the main part of the um, of the presentation today, so how you can identify common problems um, and address those problems using Fusion Reactor and uh, some of the new capabilities that we've got in Fusion Reactor Cloud. Uh, then I want to show the new logging capability. So this is something that we've just introduced now in Fusion Reactor 9. And uh, finally, um, give a short mention to some of the capabilities that are coming up um, in Fusion Reactor Cloud in the new year. So I'll just jump straight in. So our mission, basically, we want to help developers gain better insight and transparency into their applications, speed up the task of finding issues. So. That's always been our mission as a company. That's really been the, the, the main idea behind Fusion Reactor. And from what our customers tell us, uh, they're able to find and fix errors in their code up to five times faster using Fusion Reactor. So uh, Fusion Reactor has been around for quite a while, since 2005. We've got about 5,000 customers. Um, there's around 35,000 servers, uh, production servers using uh, Fusion Reactor. Uh, we've also got um, thousands of uh, developers using the product. We've got a separate uh, developer license thing that you can use. And uh, Fusion Reactor is the global market leader for monitoring on the Adobe server platform. But we've also got uh, many customers who are also running uh, Lucy, even some running Rilo. And um, uh, obviously, Fusion Reactor is a Java monitor. So uh, around about a quarter of our customer base uh, doesn't do any CF. At, uh, at all. They're just purely Java based. And you can see up at the top, um, if anybody's familiar with G2 and goes and takes a look in G2 um, for Fusion Reactor, we'll see that we've won uh, a number of awards and uh, we're actually ranked pretty high in the uh, world list of APM uh, solutions. I think last time I looked, which was a couple of weeks ago, we were actually number four out of 220 plus uh, APM solutions. So that's that's pretty amazing, something we're very proud of. So software development has, has changed. And through those changes, uh, monitoring has, has had to change with it. And with the change, basically here I'm talking about uh, the migration to cloud to AWS, Azure, Google Compute. Um, more companies are moving to microservice-based architectures, uh, maybe using Docker, orchestrated through Kubernetes. Um, and with, this, the, with these changes, there's been a change in monitoring, um, or the, the term that's commonly used now is observability. And um, with that, there's been a focus on what they call the three pillars of observability, which is metrics, logs, and traces. And the future is actually moving um, towards uh, something called AI ops, which is AI operations and machine learning. So um, in the future, I think there'll be less of people sort of having to maybe dig into to log files um, and try and you know try and dig into the the details a lot of the um, let's say alerting and monitoring is going to be done through um, technologies like machine learning so that's that's the future we're not quite there yet but this is definitely coming 
So the challenge with all this and these changes is basically to get uh, complete observability across, across the whole application. And uh, as I mentioned uh, on the previous slide, the three pillars are metrics, logs, and traces. And this is what we were able to manage in Fusion Reactor. But on top of that, with our focus being on, uh, on developers and sort of tackling problems and getting to the root of uh, various problems, we've put a lot of emphasis into um, tools like profiling. Um, we've got uh, a number of profilers available in Fusion Reactor. We've got a memory profiler. A, uh, a code profiler, CPU profiler, um, uh, and a thread profiler. And as well as that, we've got a built-in uh, production debugger in, in Fusion Reactor. So the debuggers there to enable the developers to actually debug their, their applications, their production applications, whilst they're running in production. This is uh, unique. There's no other... Um, observability or monitoring tool that's able to do this. Uh, and we've had that capability for, for about uh, seven years now in Fusion Reactor. We've also got uh, automatic error detection. So when errors occur in your applications, Fusion Reactor is able to um, automatically pinpoint the error and pinpoint that down to the line of code. And I'll show you that once we're into the um, demo. So this platform that we've got now, um, we've actually been re-architecting uh, our platform for about the last uh, 18 months. And we've built that platform now completely on open source software, uh, basically using um, uh, Prometheus or Cortex to capture metrics, uh, Loki to capture logs, and Tempo to capture traces. And these components are supported through um, CNCF, which is a cloud native computing platform. And um, we're also embracing uh, Grafana. So I think you'll, you'll see if for, for uh, you guys who are familiar with Grafana, um, you'll be able to recognize those components now in the, uh, in the cloud UI. And as part of this, we're also embracing uh, open telemetry using the OTLP metrics protocol. And what this means is that in the future, or actually right now, which you'll also see, um, we're able to support other languages. So not just uh, Java and Cold Fusion, but also languages like Ruby, um, PHP, C++, .NET, uh, Python, Node, uh, and Go. Uh, are some of the uh, some of the languages that we'll be able to uh, support moving forward, and uh, I'll be able to demonstrate that um, uh, during the uh, demo. So developers don't have it easy. So basically, what why why do we do this sort of this low level stuff? And um, the answer really is that uh, on average, uh, there was a recent uh, D-Zone performance uh, study. And what they said was that 32% of developers actually spend two and a half days on average to isolate production problems. And from that time, 75% of it, if you imagine, you know, you're, you're on average it takes two and a half days, 75% of that time is actually spent on this mean time to know. And the mean time to know is basically the time that you spend trying to understand why is something going wrong? Why is it breaking? Why is your application performing slowly? Uh, usually it's pretty quick to, you, you know, you can usually, you get a pretty quick message if something's broken. Um, and usually once you've, once you've found the problem, Fixing it also doesn't take much time and, and redeploying it usually goes pretty quick as well. So the main amount of time is, is really trying to understand the problem and that's where Fusion Reactor focuses. And uh, on top of that, uh, they also said that 94% of developers are still using logs to identify errors um, in production. 
So that's that's an amazingly high uh, high number, and um, we're also addressing that much more now in uh, in fusion reactor. And what we're doing is we're we're tying logs to um, trace information, transaction information, so that you can really understand. Okay, for you know you can look into your logs. Uh, and then connect the dots to find out why something's going wrong. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump into um, the demo. So some of the problems that we're going to be looking at today, so some of the common problems that people have are things like performance problems. And with performance problems, uh, this could be resource limitations, maybe due to um, socket IO, so you're waiting on a socket, or you've got um, some sort of caching problem, um, and we've got a number of um, uh, resources within Fusion Reactor, like the resource metrics and the profiler, that you can use to identify those problems. Um, then, potentially, you've got external application issues. So you may have um, a database, or you may have some uh, API callouts, um, which are also causing you uh, performance issues. And we can find that now using something called distributed tracing. And distributed tracing uh, enables us, us to look not just inside Cold Fusion, but out beyond CF. Um, so that we can really see an end-to-end -end picture of everything that's happening in your applications. And then you've maybe got database issues. So uh, performance problems could be you, you've got too many queries or you've got poorly, poorly written um, queries or, um, yeah, there's, there's something wrong um, with, with your database queries. And Fusion Reactor can provide a lot of information in this space to enable you to, to pinpoint uh, problems and to get insight into uh, what, what, what's happening in the database. Then you've maybe got memory issues. So maybe you're allocating too much memory. Or maybe you've got a, a memory leak. And we can also look uh, at those areas. And the final one is something's going wrong, or you've got an error in one of your applications, and you'd like to debug that, um, which I can I'll be able to demonstrate with the debugger, and also using the event snapshots, which is the uh, automated error detection. So those are some of the things that uh, I'm going to be going through now, and I'll just bring up Fusion Reactor. And for those of you who are familiar with Fusion Reactor, um, this Fusion Reactor's got a, um, a, a local on-premise UI as well as a cloud-based uh, UI. Uh, the cloud-based UI Fusion Reactor Cloud is optional. And um, if you if you take the cloud UI, then you also get uh, the on-premise UI as well. So the on-premise UI, uh, that's always available. So the first thing that we're going to do now, uh, and this is the cloud cloud-based UI. I'm going to be sort of focusing on the cloud today. I'll show you some things with the the on-premise, but the the main part will be showing you uh, what we can do with the cloud. And uh, as you can see here, these are the uh, the servers that I've currently got. I've got, um, what is it, 9, 10, 11 servers up right now. Uh, and I can go back and look at these across time. So update and get to see the last hour. Uh, I can all, also see a real-time view of uh, information here. So if I drill into one of these, um, for example, my CF storefronts here, then uh, I can see I've got a bunch of um, I see a bunch of metrics here, and we can also control these metrics uh, very simply by uh, just selecting a new metric, and that that new metric will be instantly displayed. And you may notice here this has actually gone into live view, so Fusion Reactor is very much um, a, a real time monitoring solution, and even in the cloud. 
Um, I hope you can see, you know, this is updating pretty rapidly and, um, you know, we're really able to get um, real, real time data here. So let's go into the application screen. And uh, I've actually got my, my store app here. So I can see all the various different applications that I've got available. And this store application, this is running on a little cluster. It's a two machine cluster. And what you're seeing here is um, the percentage of time taken for various different um, uh, CF pages. I can also see my average time. So if I select uh, one of these, what the graph that you can see here, that the, the light green line is actually the, the mean, the average, and then uh, the darker green are the outliers. So this is pretty useful to gauge if you've got a transaction that maybe you've got one, one machine in the cluster is always um, throwing your average response time out because it's slow for some reason, you'd be able to see that in that view. Uh, let's take a look at the lowest, so the slowest. So I can see here, um, if I just, let's say the last, last 30 minutes, um, I can see I've got a few slow requests here. Um, and this top one, this products.cfm, let's take a look at that one. So if I click on products.cfm, I can see that um, some of these actually ran pretty quickly if I put that down at one second okay so that these are these are organized on duration I'm going to filter these um, so I'm just showing now anything that run more than uh, longer than 10 seconds and if I drill into one of these transactions this top one here and then take a look at the sub transactions. So this ran for 32 seconds. But when I look at it, what it was doing, it actually wasn't doesn't seem to be doing that much. Uh, I got a select statement here, which ran so quickly, it was actually only registered at zero milliseconds. So it didn't even register for, for a full millisecond. Um, and yeah, not too sure what happened here until we look in the profiler and when we look in the profiler the profiler basically shows us uh, sort of exactly what was happening and when i go up to the top here i can see that um uh, almost a hundred percent of my time again this is the 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 uh, select uh, that we did was so minimal it didn't it just didn't even register because so it was under a millisecond uh, but I can see here that all my time was spent in this errors.cfc and when I click on that what Fusion Reactor will actually do is it decompiles that um, that class or that method on the fly to let me look inside the code and I can see here what I've actually got is uh, this was this was running a Lucy page, and um, this page must have had an error, and all the time that it was taking was actually um, in this error.cfc, and it's actually um, going through a directory structure, and it's dumping um, variable information out into a file, and that's why this is actually taking so long. Um, it's uh, writing out a bunch of um, CF tags, and this is actually where all of our time was was being taken up. So sometimes you may have some transaction which um, seems to be slow, but the reason is something completely different. So this this transaction normally runs pretty quickly, but in this particular case, uh, it took uh, almost 33 seconds, but that was all in the uh, errors.cfc and you can see that really easily inside the uh, profiler uh, if i jump to if i take um, uh, a different example uh, i'm going to take a look at this buy now page now and um, these ones ran pretty quickly 
I'd say the slowest one here was 1.25 seconds. But I'm going to take a look at this one. And if I drill into that and go into the subtransactions again, I can see, OK, this was doing a CFHTTP post. But I don't really see anything else. I, I don't see what it was doing beyond that. And this is now with the, the change to Fusion Reactor and this focus on distributed tracing, this is basically all changed. So what we've got now is uh, if I take this trace ID and click on the trace ID, so Fusion Reactor is um, going, picking up the, the trace information. So this is the distributed trace information for that particular transaction. And now what I can see is actually very interesting. This was my, my CFM page with the HTTP post, uh, but that actually called out to an order processor. Um, that order processor was written in, uh, this was written in Java. And um, the order processor then called out to uh, an order controller, this generate invoice uh, thing. And here I did a number of, um, uh, I did uh, an insert and a number of selects on a database. And finally, um, I called out to Kafka. So this was um, Kafka message bus. And then from there into my um, shipping processor. And the shipping processor is actually written in this particular case, uh, this is written in Node. So I can see the full end-to-end -end trace here, uh, and I can see that vision, so in, in, a, in a visual way. And um, this is obviously, this is outside of CF. So whereas previously, you'd only be able to see, you know, sort of, uh, you'd see that how long something ran, but you wouldn't be able to understand exactly what it was doing if it called out of CF. But with these distributed traces, um, this enables us to do that. And you can also see it's showing logs for this span. And if I go and click on the logs for this span, this essentially shows me the related log information. And if I open up one of those log files, I can see I've got a trace pointer here. And if I click on that trace pointer, this then brings me back into the trace. And what we can also do is we can represent a so-called node graph. And this is really cool capability that we've got here. Um, we can see the complete end-to-end -end, um, call hierarchy for this particular thing. So again, we've got the HTTP post, uh, we're going into the order processor, um, we're going into um, this, this external database here where we're doing um, a select, a number of, uh, or a number of selects on an insert. Uh, we're then calling out to our Kafka order processor, which is then going out to the, uh, the shipping processor, which if you remember was written in Node. And I can see all of that information uh, visualize very nicely in the uh, node graph. Um, <clears throat> sort of sticking with the processor, so sticking with, um, or the profiler rather, um, what we can also see if I go back into the, um, into the regular UI, I've got a couple of profiles uh, here, a couple of slow running requests. This one actually ran for um, almost a minute, 59 seconds. And again, when I click on that, um, Fusion Reactor shows me the profile very nicely. And again, from here um, on the on-premise version, I can also click into a, um, a method or a class, and that will instantly be decompiled. And for this particular one, I can see I'm actually, I've got an iterator here, which is iterating 100,000 times. And the code which it's executing is, is this code here, uh, where I can see I'm iterating 100,000 times. And I'm actually writing uh, into a file. I'm opening it, writing into that file, and closing it inside a loop.
and obviously that's not something that you want to do but when i look at the profile i can also see that very nicely so 47 percent of my time was actually spent um in the in the file open um 46 of my time was spent here in the file close and uh around about five percent of my time was actually spent in the right so just by looking at profile, I can get a quick understanding of where I'm spending um, all of my time. OK, um, let's take a look at if we just drop back into cloud. Um, what's also interesting here, and, and those of you, you guys who are familiar with uh, Grafana will also recognize this. Um, but there's also there's lots of capabilities here, so I can use this Explorer to uh, analyze uh, logs metrics and traces and what we can also do is um, look at services so this is pretty interesting this is our application from before with our cf storefront um, and from here i can actually look at things like request rate so i can see for this period of time if i look at this over the last i don't know last 30 minutes uh, i can see uh, which uh, requests we're actually going through, and I can visualize that in different ways. Uh, I can also see, for example, um, uh, whether I've got any failed uh, requests, or I can see uh, unique traces. So these are all the traces um, which have been run in, in the last while within that, uh, within that time frame. And if I put that down to, I don't know, the last 15 minutes, then you can see this instantly updates and I can see all the transactions. And from here, again, I can run straight into a transaction and dig into the details. So that's really useful. Okay, um, another sort of type of uh, problem that we've got is um, with, with databases. And if I go back to on-premise here and take a look in the uh, JDBC view, I can see here, um, I can see a history of uh, all the transactions which have been run. And what we found is that probably about 60, 65% of all the problems that people have are in and around um, databases. And uh, I can take a look if I click into my longest transactions. These transactions here are the longest. So we, we differentiate between uh, longest and slowest transactions. The longest transactions are the longest transactions across all time. Um, so but basically since my, my server restarted, and I can see I've got a number of, uh, of transactions which which took quite a while here uh, i can drill into those if i click on the jdbc tab i also then see more details uh, about a specific transaction so i can see uh, how long it a uh, transaction ran for what the total time was how much time it spent on the database and how many rows were returned so that's also a really useful um really useful piece of information um, Let's take a look now at, um, at uh, actually, what I can also show you with relation to databases, if I go into my dashboards here, um, we've also got some useful um, dashboards specifically for databases. So here, this is showing, these are all the various different databases um, that I've got available. So right now I'm looking at everything but I can also um, filter down into here. So, okay, show me, in this case, the last three hours. Uh, I can see then throughput, uh, total query time. And again, I've got access to all the various different databases um, which, which we're running. So I can just flick between those. Some of these, there's not that much going on, but uh, some of them are, are actually quite busy. Okay, let's take a look at uh, at memory now. So I'm going to go back into the on-premise view, and um, what Fusion Reactor shows you is uh, you can get really good insight into all the various different memory spaces. 
and we see that here in the memory overview. I've also got that available in the cloud. So if I take uh, if I take a server here and I've got my Java memory view. So if I pull that up, this is uh, essentially uh, all the various different memory spaces. And we've got that same view here in Fusion Reactor. I can also go back and say, show me the last hour or show me the last day or show me the last week. With the on-premise um, user interface, all the information that you're seeing here is stored in memory. So this is one of the differences between the on-prem and the cloud. So the on-prem uh, information is stored in memory. We're also we're capturing all this information into uh, log files as well. And those log files can be um, viewed through the archive viewer. So you can see here, this is actually, this is rendering information directly out of uh, log files. And I can also see, uh, I've got request uh, information. I've got specific um, memory logs. So if I click into one of these, you know, I'll see uh, a specific information related to Eden space or survivor space or, or whatever it is. Um, and this is all captured automatically uh, by Fusion Reactor. But what we can also do is uh, memory problems could be related to specific transactions. So if I open up the request view here and then look at request by memory, what this is showing me is how much heap was allocated for a specific uh, transaction or web request. And I can see that the, the killer uh, transaction here was this top one. It was generate.jsp. And this actually allocated uh, 3.26 gig of uh, memory. And when I drill into that, uh, I know what this was doing. It was actually creating a database. So when I click on the JDBC tab, uh, I can see right up at the top, I've got a bunch of uh, table creates. And then I was doing a bunch of inserts into, uh, into that database. And it's also quite interesting here, um, you know, as this was a, a database view, you can see the, the data source here. And uh, this is my DB memory direct. And if I just look at that um, from start, so this is initially it shows you the last minute, 10 minutes, 30 minutes and hour. Uh, but I've not done anything on this database now for over an hour, so I'm looking at since start. But this shows me which operations were performed. It shows me which tables were involved in those operations, table count and operation count. So this is also quite, quite useful information. Uh, similarly, on the JDBC, we can also look at JDBC transactions by memory. So I can see here that um, on this top one, I've got the select, which took, um, in this case, 33 megabytes, um, which is obviously a lot. But this gives you an idea. You may have specific memory issues, and those memory issues are being triggered by um, specific queries. But because, because the query runs very fast, you don't actually, um, you know, you don't connect uh, or you don't think to look inside that query uh, without having this specific view. So it's very useful uh, having having the views for, for database transactions as well as web requests and uh, regular transactions to, to drill inside memory. Um, what we've also got, um, is uh, a memory profiler. I think I mentioned that before. And this is the heap histogram. So what you're looking at now is this is the heap. And I've just put this on uh, one second refresh here. And you can see uh, things changing in this view. And what you're looking at here are all the classes which have been instantiated on the heap. And you can see the number of objects which are being created as part of that class, the percentage of memory, um, 
basically in, in live real time. So you can see how many actual bytes were allocated in each individual class, which has been uh, instantiated on the heap. And uh, what you can do here, if you're looking for, let's say, you're looking for um, a memory leak, what you would do is you would um, take a snapshot of memory at a point that um, your applications may be just initialized or you've got sort of a clean reboot. And then once you think that you're in a position that you're actually losing memory, you can then take a snapshot and if we then go into the heap snapshots view, um, what I can see here is actually I did a baseline earlier and I'm gonna compare that to the snapshot that I've just taken and then I can do a diff. And this is also really useful because this uh, gives you for those two points of time uh, the number of objects which are created per class, and again, the, the size um, in, in bytes, the delta between those two points of in time. So, you know, looking for memory anomalies is not, you know, it's not quite as simple as, you know, you wave your magic wand and suddenly it says, hey, here's your, here's your memory problem. Um, but Fusion Reactor gives you a number of tools in order to, um, you know, to, to highlight memory anomalies and to give you um, very good pointers where those problems could be. Okay, so um, let's take a look at um, another uh, problem now. So this problem is related. So I'm going to show you the uh, the, the debugger. And I've got a little um, little CFM page here. And what this is doing is just basically it's, it's generating a random number between 0 and 3. And it is using that random number. It's just dividing x uh, or dividing 10 by uh, the value y, which is in this random range between 0 to 3. So now, this has kicked off and it's actually thrown an error. And if I go into my error history, I can see right up at the top here, this was the, um, this was the, the problem child. So this is the, uh, the thing that just caused the, the error. And if I click into uh, the error here, I can see that this was a divide by zero. And I can see the offending uh, CFM page. And when I click to decompile that, Fusion Reactor is actually, in this case, it's showing me my CF code. And how it does that is I've told Fusion Reactor um, where my code is located. And it knows um, that there was an error in this particular class. And it knows where the class is because I told it. <coughs> so it just basically marries the two and then goes and gets the, the code. And it's rendered here, it's highlighted the line in the code where the error occurred. And I can see that was on line three. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set a breakpoint on that. So if I close that now, and then I go into my debugger, and I can see this was actually the, um, uh, this was the, the CFM page. Where, where the error occurred. And I'm gonna, uh, I've just clicked on that to, to activate that, uh, that breakpoint. And if I run this again, you can see that the tab here is spinning. And that, um, that request didn't complete. And when I go back into Fusion Reactor, I can now see at the top of the screen, I've got this bug. And this is actually, this is the debugger page that I'm on here. And you, you may notice I've got a timer running. And this timer, I've given myself 60 seconds to intercept this thread. So the location is actually the thread, which uh, is executing. And I'm going to click on the debug icon now. And now this has taken me inside a debugger, inside Fusion Reactor, and inside my production environment. And you can see. Um, this actually halted at line three, 
and um, I can see here I've got uh, I've got a couple of watches set so I've got a watch for y and I can see that y is equal to one and x is equal to null if I set another uh, breakpoint here and then I resume then that gets down to that breakpoint and now I can see that x is equal to 10 because uh, in this case x is equal to 10 divided by y and that's what we'd expect and if I just let that resume then we'll see that uh, that was actually that was what was computed now I'm going to set um, I'm going to delete that second uh, breakpoint here and then I'm going to rearm this one and I'm going to run that page again and again it's it's spinning here and if we go back into the debugger and then we go back into here what I can also do is I can see this time y is equal to 2 and if I click on the variables I can see that but I can actually this is a debugger so I can change that variable so I'm going to change y now to 0 and I'm just going to let um, let this resume. And now I can see I've got a divide by zero error. So I was actually able to debug my application in production. I was able to modify a variable. And uh, this may sound scary, um, but it's actually we've got lots and lots of customers who use this. Obviously, this is not something you use every day. Uh, but if you've got a corner case where you can't find the problem, this is really, really, really useful um, in certain cases. And just in case you're wondering, there is almost, there's hardly any uh, performance impact for this. Normally, when you start a debugger, um, it puts the, the JVM into debug mode. That is not the case um, for, for us. We don't put the JVM into debug mode because we've coded directly at the debugger through something called the JVM TI, which is the JVM tools interface. It's all written in C um, and it's very, very fast. So I mentioned two things. We've got the debugger. We've also got uh, the so-called the event snapshots. And um, if I take the event snapshots on one of these uh, requests here and I click into that, what Fusion Reactor has done, and it's done this automatically, is it's highlighted the line in the code. And um, it's shown me, if I, if I just bring that up, it's actually got all the, all the session variables. So I can see in this particular case, when I ran that transaction, y was actually equal to 0. But I can also see, uh, I can see CGI variables. I can see all the scope variables. I can see whether I've got any cookies set. So the real power of this is that without doing anything, this was actually without setting a breakpoint at all, Fusion Reactor was able to pinpoint that we got a problem, highlight the line in the code, and provide all the, all the scope variables so that we've really got the, the whole picture of what was going on um, when this particular error occurred. So that's the, that's the debugger. Okay, let's move back into the slides real quick. And um, so we've looked at uh, some common problems now. Um, what I mentioned at the start is what we're doing now is we're actually able to um, ingest uh, logs. And this is not just um, fusion reactors logs or CF logs. We're actually able to ingest uh, any logs from multiple different sources. We can uh, filter that content uh, to, to diagnose problems. We can visualize the logs, and we've got a number of dashboards uh, available to analyze those logs. We can also set specific alerts on logs. So if you've got something, if you're looking for something inside a log, you can set an alert on that so that you can very quickly um, you know, uh, be alerted uh, if, if a specific error occurs. And I'll just show you that real quick, some of the capabilities. So we go back into cloud, and then I click on the logging area here. So I'm just going to show you a few of these um, 
different uh, dashboards that we've got. You can see we've got a number of dashboards here. I'll show you the log errors first. So this is analyzing across the last hour. Um, and this is analyzing logs from a bunch of different jobs. Each of these jobs is actually that these are all things which are running on, on different machines in this particular case. Um, but you can see we can um, automatically, uh, the, all the logs are obviously they're in, indexed, uh, but I can also, you know, use that indexing to search for a specific text like warning or information or error or exception. And you'll see pretty much instantly, um, you'll get uh, an image of the log rates and you'll also actually see the logs um, being displayed at the bottom of the screen. And this works, it's very, very quick. Um, you know, even if you, you look across time, uh, it's actually very quick, very usable to, uh, to get this, this detailed information. So that's the error logs. Another one that we've got, if I click back into log dashboards, is um, resources and logs. So the resources and logs gives us an idea of uh, log throughput compared to system memory, JVM uh, memory and CPU. So again, you know, we can um, we can filter here. So I can say, okay, show me, just show me my CF storefront. And that will instantly change. So it's just highlighting basically uh, the logs which were coming in from um, uh, from from my cf store uh, which i've got on this two machine cluster and it's also filtering then the the memory and resource uh, information um based on on that filter so this is is really good you can also go into here and uh, select uh, a, a specific area of time and it will just automatically zoom in and the logs will also be filtered um uh, for that actual um, for that time period. Uh, another thing that we can do is uh, we can look for events. So if I go into here and then click on log events, um, events are really, really useful because um, through applying different filters, and these are all, all the filters which are available. So I've got my application name, um, host machine, instance, or job. I'll take job. Um, and then these are all the jobs which we've currently got running. So if I say, okay, I want to take my CF store from two, and that will instantly um, filter the logs based on that. And uh, these events, it's uh, possible to set up your own events so you can basically control uh, how you're seeing this data and we will also automatically generate events for you um, like i said for if it's a specific application name or if it's running on a specific server um, then we'll also uh, generate various events automatically so that's pretty useful um how do we do that sort of from a, an architecture perspective it's also worth looking at real quick um this is the architecture so you can see uh, i've got um i've got a log processor here i've got this logging agent uh, we can also support um, various different logging agents like promptail or fluent bit or fluent d um, we've then got an ingester, so we're sending logs via HTTP to our log ingest, and we're persisting those logs um, in, in uh, S3 buckets on Amazon. Um, but this basically, this capability, if you're already using um, some other tool like Paper Trail or Logstash or Splunk, um, then Fusion Reactors uh, really giving you a really good alternative way to um, to process and monitor your logs but also linking those logs to the the low level information that we're capturing in in reactor so let me just jump back into into the demo here uh, i mentioned before we've got some other um, dashboards which we've got available i just want to show show uh, a few of those things um, 
first thing up request performance we've got something similar already in uh, in in the cloud and also obviously in uh, in the on premise but this is this is really good really powerful so i can see here uh, my request duration my average uh, trace duration and remember this is distributed tracing so this is not just looking specifically at uh, at cf and I can also, if I go into here and then mouse on one of those things uh, on a point in one of these graphs, you can see I can add an uh, annotation. So that annotation would persist across all the different uh, graphs. So if we know that something's going wrong, I can add an annotation about it. I can also uh, show events. So if I click on, on one specific point in, in a graph, the show events will go and pull up all the um, log events which have occurred at that exact point. And you can see this was everything which, um, uh, which, which has come up. These were actually all the log events which came up at that exact point. Um, so if you can visually see something's happening, but then you say, okay, I want to go and look in the logs for that, that's, um, that's possible. We've then got... Uh, other dashboards, for example, I showed you before, I showed you the, um, uh, the database dashboard. Um, I can also see things like, uh, let me take a look here, uh, total resource system usage. So this is also quite a good one. Uh, this is looking at all the all the various different resources, and again, this is it's very easy here to just take change the time frame, and you'll see instantly. You know uh, the graphs are updated, and uh, all very very usable. We've also got things um, like the instance map. So the instance map is showing these are all the various different machines that I've got running. And again, I can jump from one of these. So if I said, oh, so CF Storefront is actually running at 32%. Right now, if I just click on that, then it will take me straight into the resource usage. So I can start and jump into the, um, into the details here. Okay, we're coming up to the end of the presentation. Um, there's actually a couple of things that, a um, couple of experimental things that uh, I'd still like to show you real quick. Um, I, I mentioned uh, right at the start, or as I was showing the, uh, the, the new architecture, one of the things that we're doing now in Fusion Reactor is we're, we're pulling in information, not just from the application, but um, from, uh, outside so basically from the the infrastructure uh, of what's going on in and around um, an application and you can see this is our node uh, node graph here and this is just um, information related to a specific node and you can see I've got access to CPU memory um, I've got VM stat information in memory. I've got hardware information, so I can look at, for example, a disk. This is disk storage here. So I can see uh, input output operations, uh, how those are completed. I can see things like queue size here. Um, if I take a look, I've also got network traffic. So you know there may be anomalies which are occurring which are really not related to the application itself but it's something hardware related and um with with this new architecture that we've got now we can essentially pull information from right across the um right across the whole application so basically we get this this view this observability view this unified observability view uh, really across across the whole environment and um, there's also things that we can do uh, for example we can discard that um, we can look into specific databases so I've got a dashboard here for MySQL um, this isn't even being used by by the application this is just a separate database that um, I, I wanted to instrument but uh, you can see here uh, we get very detailed information um, directly out of the database. And this is just now uh, available in Fusion Reactor. 
And again, you know, the, the whole point of this is providing as much information as possible. So it enables us to join the dots. Uh, last thing I wanted to show you, which is, is quite interesting. I mentioned also right at the start that, that the future is going to be machine learning. And we're already uh, working on that. And um, what you're looking at here is uh, this is CPU related information um, based on our machine learning uh, algorithm. And we're using um, a couple of machine learning algorithms. We're using uh, K-means and we're using uh, Profit from um, Facebook. And what I can see here that in the last 12 hours, we actually didn't uh, throw any anomalies. Uh, but if I extend the time here to 24 hours, okay, now some things have started showing up. So the more data that we, uh, that we analyze here, um, the, the, the more uh, anomalies are being raised. And if I go to two days and take a look at the data, Okay, now I've got a bunch more uh, anomalies which are, are being highlighted. And the whole point of this really is that we can use this machine learning algorithm to analyze um, the telemetry, the metrics which we're reading, to give you warnings uh, of potential problems. And it's really interesting. We're already using this on our own systems. And the results are amazing. You know, it's finding stuff which we would have never have known was a problem because you know we did we can't set alerts up for everything. But the machine learning algorithm is looking at the data and then saying, hey, you know, take a look at this. This could be a problem. And we're able to apply uh, the these ML algorithms on all kinds of different um, metric information. So Back to the slides, last couple of slides now. So what's coming up? Uh, I've mentioned the infrastructure monitoring. So that's going to be available. Well, it's available now, but we're going to be, be releasing it to, to everybody um, uh, in the next, uh, well, it won't be December now, but it probably in January that's being released. Um, we're building lots of new dashboards. So these are going to be rendered automatically when we detect specific um, uh, technologies being uh, monitored. Um, we've got fully distributed tracing across different languages and technologies. And um, we've got a new agent, which is the 9.2 agent, which is uh, also, it's ready for release. We're going to release that uh, in January as well. Um, then something that's coming up is synthetic monitoring. So basically giving you an outside in view of your application so that you can see how your uh, customers perceive your application, whether they're, they're getting um, uh, good performance or not. And then finally, this machine learning, um, which definitely is the future. We're already working on that now. Um, and we, we should be introducing um, machine learning uh, dashboards as early as uh, Q1 next year. So that's all coming soon. Um, to summarize, Fusion Reactor lets you know when, why, and where issues occur. It's very low overhead. So it's, it's around about or just less than 1%. So if you compare that to other monitoring tools, the other monitoring tools coming in around 5 to 8%, but Reactor still very low at just 1%. Um, you've got this full observability view, so we're, we're able to, to monitor other languages now. Uh, we can look at logs, infrastructure, and um, distributed integrations. We provide a developer and a production um, license. Uh, it's very easy to install. It's an agent. We've got a full installer. Um, but you can actually you can install it in a couple of minutes. Uh, it's, it's really very simple. Um, with the licensing, you can do reservations for cloud or on-demand licensing. So um, if you reserve your, your uh, seats up front, uh, you save 20% um, versus on-demand uh, billing. And prices start from $19 per month for a developer license and uh, $99 for a Fusion Reactor Ultimate. Uh, that's per server per month. 
Okay, that's it. That's the end of the uh, the presentation. Does anybody have um, any questions? Are we all still awake, uh, or did everybody fall asleep? Hopefully not. But um, yeah, if you've got any questions, um, please feel free to type them in the chat, and uh, I'll do my best to to answer them.